नमस्ते वेलकम टू अवर चैनल क्यूबिट एजुकेशनल सर्विसेस आई एम प्राणेश द फाउंडर ऑफ द चैनल एंड एन आई एस सी बैंगलोर एलेवेंस इन दिस वीडियो आई एम गोइंग टू आंसर ऑल द क्वेश्चन ऑल द फ्रीक्वेंटली सेंट क्वेश्चन टू मी बाय द स्टूडेंट्स इंक्लूडिंग यू दीज क्वेश्चन आर रिलेटेड टू आर आर गोइंग टू बी रिलेटेड टू द एक्चुअल एस आर एफ टेस्ट ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी थ्री बिफोर आई गो टू दैट If you are new to our channel, let me tell you that Qubit Educational Services is the only channel currently on YouTube, which is offering detailed solutions to all previous year's questions of the SR Aptitude Test, right from its first edition, twenty seventeen, and also PYQs to National Entrance Screening Test or NEST conducted by NASER. You can visit our YouTube channel and click on the subscribe button to get instant updates. In addition to the previous year's questions, we are also offering five free mock tests, which can be accessed from any device, including your laptop, mobiles, iPhones, desktops, everything. Okay, so to sign up for for these five mock tests, you have to go to our website www.cubitpune.com, and then you have to select test series. You will be redirected to the sign up page. You need to fill in your true details, and then you will be sent a link to your email ID. Once you complete any of these five tests or each one of them, you will get to see the detailed solutions to that particular test, which will be accessible till the the actual ICER aptitude test 2023. Let's now go to our first frequently asked questions. What is the minimum marks I should score to get into ICER? Well, to answer this question, I'll say there is no minimum marks or maximum marks which anyone can predict. here is why i'm saying that all of you know that the exam is going to be of 240 marks right the exam is going to be of 240 marks now suppose you scored 190 out of 240 okay suppose you scored 190 out of 240 now i will present to you two extreme scenarios look here scenario number 1 all others all other students they scored less than 190 which means even if you feel that 190 is not a decent enough score to get into the top icers or iisc because others have scored less than you you will get the seat of your choice but as opposed to that if other students score greater than your score you might be thinking okay 190 out of 240 is a very good score i will get into any of the icers or iisc that i want but because others have scored more than you although you answered very well according to your strengths because others did better than you unfortunately in that case you will not get any seat now these are the two extreme situations that i have discussed where all of this other students scored more than you all of the other students less than you but the conclusion is it's not the number of marks or the minimum marks that matters but what matters is the, is your rank rank is going to matter rank matters the most because see the number of seats is fixed correct the number of seats is fixed so irrespective of how many marks you get it's the it's your rank that is going to decide your future whether you will get a seat or not correct so please don't waste your precious time in this last week on thinking about the marks okay the rank is going to matter do your best right a related frequently asked question is percentile and rank the same okay you can see rank is the only thing that matters the most percentile is a bit <laughs> i would say an alternative way of expressing your rank here is an example suppose 1000 candidates appear for the ICER aptitude test 23 okay and your rank is 10 so let's say your all india rank is 10 then what is going to be your percentile it's going to be 99 how is it calculated it is calculated by considering the number of students who are behind you so that is 990 by it dividing it by the total number of students applied for that exam into 100 that will give you your percentile now consider another situation suppose 10000 students appear for the exam and your rank is 100 again your percentile will still be 99 
okay again your percentile will be 99 because in that case if you subtract 100 from 10,000 right it will be 9900 and if you divide this by 10,000 and multiply this by 100 you will again go, you are again going to get the same number that is 99 got it which means which means even if you have the same percentile what matters the most is your rank rank is the only thing that matters in any competitive exam please remember that don't fa don't fall for any other statement rank only matters not percentile not how many marks you got nothing because it is a clear play between the rank and other, uh, how many candidates are in front of you, ahead of you and the number of seats available. Okay, let's say for example, if the ISRS had only 50 seats, okay, if your rank is 10, you'll get a chance. But if your rank is 100, then you'll not get any seat because there are not enough seats there. You might be happy saying my percentile is 99, but if there are not enough seats available, then what are you going to do with that? Okay. So it's only the rank that matters, not percentile, not marks. Okay. All right. Now the next question is, well, it's a very valid question. If none of the options is correct, then what should I do? There have been instances in previous versions of the SR aptitude test where the question did not have any correct option. In my opinion, the safest way to handle this situation is select the one that select the one select the option that is closest to the actual one now again this is this closest thing this works only with those mcqs which are numericals which have a number as their answer okay in theoretical mcqs let's say from biology or chemistry it's very hard to select the closest in that case you can uh, mark that option which you find is the most suitable one okay see there are only two possibilities either you are going to leave that question or you are going to mark an option which you find is the best right now if you don't mark anything it might be considered as you did not make any attempt to solve the question so even if the mcq was wrong or the options did not match because you did not mark any option it will be considered or it might be considered that you didn't tackle that question at all so in a case where this uh, this uh, thing arises Sh should extra marks be given or marks to all be given the safest option to do is select the one that you find the closest or you find the best okay and you should be clear about this before you go or and, and enter the exam hall because at that time while writing the test you will not have enough time to think about this so again well th th that sequence of thoughts will start and that will take you unnecessary take your unnecessary Time. okay so be, be clear about it fix the strategy and implement it in the exam next mcq sorry next next frequently asked question is will on-screen calculator be available answer is yes now why am i saying this if you go to the official mock test which is available on their website okay i sir admission.in there you will find an on-screen calculator there is a calculator icon if you click on it then non screen calculator will open see for biology and to some extent in chemistry the calculator has absolutely absolutely no role to play but you can make clever use of calculator in mathematics and physics but first of all you should get familiar to the syntax you should get familiar to the various functionalities that the calculator can offer and many other things so i've made a separate video on the tips to use virtual calculator i'll put the link in the video description please watch it that will be of very great help to you it has been of very great help in the past uh, for the past papers so it will definitely be of some use to you as well okay next are all sections mandatory now the these uh, this question is asked by those students who are either pcm students or pcb students okay the one word answer to this question is no even if you leave biology you will be well you will be graded even if you leave mathematics or pcb students will be graded but the thing is if you think that if i leave biology then i will be graded out of 180 then you are wrong you will still be graded out of 240 
just similarly for a PCB student, if you say I'm a PCB student, why should I attempt mathematics? That's okay with bolts. But in ISR aptitude test, if you leave mathematics, you are effectively leaving 25% of the paper. So you will not be graded out of 180, you will be graded out of 240. Okay. So if you have not covered anything of uh, maths being a PCB student, I will recommend you to watch my video where I talk about easy topics from mathematics which you can do and uh, get at least four to five MCQs from mathematics section. Okay, so are all sections mandatory? No, you can just leave the whole paper blank and come out of the exam all with zero out of 240. Okay, but of course you would not do that. But the reason why I included this question in this video is if you think that if I not attempt any question for, from a particular subject, let's say biology, then I will be disqualified. No, that's not the case. Even if you leave all 15 biology questions unanswered, you will still be graded, but you will be graded out of 240, not out of 180. Okay. Last MCQ of last FAQ. Well, I keep on saying MCQ, sorry. Do MCQs get repeated in ISR aptitude test? Well, no, no MCQ ever gets repeated. But the thing is, patterns do get repeated. Okay. Patterned MCQs do get repeated. If you have watched my previous year's questions videos, especially for physics and mathematics, there the patterns are clearly visible in the ISR aptitude test questions. For example, there have been a lot of questions on Gauss law. There have been many questions on uh, mechanics or let's say photoelectric effect or uh, dual nature of radiation and matter. So def definitely there is a pattern, but you can't expect same exactly same question being repeated in the next year for the next year with only the numbers changed. That that I mean that is rather the case for the board exam, but definitely not for a national level entrance exam like ISR aptitude. Yes. But see, does it mean that it's not at all uh, worth watching or solving the PYQs? No, it's worth it because that's the only official and the best resource that we can have or we do have to get to know what to expect in our actual exam. Okay, so please watch the PYQs videos, but uh, don't expect same MCQ every time. MCQs do not get repeated exactly, but the patterns definitely get repeated well that's it if you have any other queries you can send them to me on pranesham at the rate lm.iac.ac.in or info at the rate qubitpreneur.com thank you for watching this video one more thing i have also uploaded videos on most likely topics which you should be doing for isr aptitude test 2023 from mathematics and from physics I'll put those videos to those links also in the description. Thank you for watching again and all the best for your exam.